Welcome to our channel, Behind My Story. Please like, share, and subscribe. Surrogate Mom. Intriguing title, isn't it? I confess I didn't expect to be a mom at such a young age, but the circumstances often determine the path we should take for us. My mom was the reason I made this choice. But please, hold your judging to the end. Wait until you hear my story. My name is Rita, and I'm 17 years old. I was happy living with my family. My father was a doctor. My mother was a housewife. I had two younger sisters, Carla and Sarah, and we lived in a nice, quiet neighborhood. Our home was always filled with joy and laughter. My father was a great dad, and my mother was a fantastic mom. We enjoyed a stable life, until mom suddenly fell ill. She started having frequent headaches. My father took her to the neurologist, and he said that her situation was serious, that she needed urgent surgery. Our life was suddenly turned upside down. We became sad and depressed. None of us talked much. Father was always trying to console mom, but whenever he was alone, he cried just like we did. Our life became gloomy. The doctor scheduled a date for the surgery, and the closer the date got, the more anxious we became. When the day finally arrived, we packed some of mom's things to take to the hospital. She looked as if it would be her last time to see us. I had a bad feeling about this. When we arrived at the hospital, Mom called me over and said, Rita, you have to take care of your father and sisters. I suddenly panicked, and I told her, Mom, stop talking like that. You're going to get better and come back home. She put her hand over my mouth and said, Of course I will, but you need to take care of them while I'm gone. Will you do this for me? I was crying, but I tried to calm down and nodded. Then the doctor called her in. She hugged everyone and went into the operating room for surgery. We waited outside the room, worried. After a short while, the doctor came out and called my father in quickly. I knew what had happened from the expression on the doctor's face. Father came back out a few minutes later and looked at us. We were crying, and he hugged us. Our life fell into a miserable, boring routine. Father and my sisters were always sad, and I did my best to try and take care of them. One day, father called me to him and said, you know how much I love you, all of you, but sometimes we have to make difficult decisions. I don't like the sound of that. He said that he's going to have to get remarried. I took two steps back and said, get married again. But why? And he told me, he told me we needed someone to take care of us. And he knows that no one can take my mother's place, but I didn't want him to finish. And I said, father, I will never take mother's place and no one ever can, but I will do my best. I'll do everything she used to do. I'm old enough and responsible enough. I can handle this. Besides, I promised Mom that I would. He looked at me intently and gave up the idea of getting remarried right away. At first, it was very hard for me to learn to do all the things, the cleaning, the cooking, but I got used to it. Step by step, I searched the Internet for tips to make my job easier and more efficient. I asked my sisters not to make a mess at home, and they were more than helpful. I would buy them presents every now and then. My cooking improved after many failed attempts. Whenever I got tired and wanted to quit, I would just remember Mom's face, and it would give me strength to go on. Ten years later, I am still the mom of the house. Dad hasn't remarried yet. My sisters grew up and are doing well in their studies. Our flat is always clean, and we're happy again. The road has been long, but I did what I had to, and I did it well. You know, sometimes the truth is even stranger than fiction, especially if you had a dark secret in your life that would put you in danger if it were exposed. Such was my case, and this is my story. My name is Charlotte, and I'm 17 years old. I live with my mom. My dad passed away before I was born, so my mom had to raise me all by herself. My mom knew everything about me my school studies, my friends. She had certain rules that I was supposed to follow, like eating outdoors was forbidden, and I can't be friends with someone unless she knew everything about them first, and so on. I thought these rules were somewhat paranoid, and I asked her why she placed such restrictions on making friends. Her reply was simply that you can't trust anyone nowadays, but that wasn't a very satisfying answer, and when I asked her what it meant, she didn't say anything further. As I was growing up, 
these rules mystified me even more, and I couldn't help but wonder if they had anything to do with my father, whom I knew nothing about. Mom always said he was a troublemaker, and she told me that everything would be clear to me in time. One holiday, I joined a new band. We held a lot of concerts. It was the best. I was good at playing music and singing. When we went camping, we met some students from other countries. We made a lot of new friends and had fun together. We even had a chance to increase our band's fame and reputation. After our first performance at camp, an aging girl approached me. She hugged me, saying, Charlotte, I missed you a lot. Taken aback, I asked, Do I know you? She surprised me again by saying, Don't you recognize me? I'm Mary, your friend. I smiled and replied, You must be mistaken. I don't know you. After insisting that she was indeed my friend, she excused herself and ran back to join her friends. Weird, though now that I think about it, I have often had an eerie feeling that someone was watching me wherever I went. I tried to shake off this feeling many occasions, but I never could. I would just tell myself that it must be my imagination. That night, we all went into the jungle. It was a jungle tour. It was very dark, and I got separated from the group and found myself alone, surrounded by trees. I called out to my friends, but no one heard me. Suddenly, I bumped into someone, a girl it seemed, and I apologized. When I turned around to look at her, I was shocked to see, well, myself, or my double. It was as if I was looking in a mirror. Who are you? I asked. I'm Charlotte, she replied simply. That's impossible. I'm Charlotte, I said assertively. Are you with us here at the campsite? Yes, she said. I asked her which way back to the campsite. She pointed in one direction and we headed back. As we were walking, her phone rang. It was her father. He was worried about her and was just making sure she was okay. We arrived at our tents without incidents, and I said, It was really nice to meet you, Charlotte. I'll see you tomorrow. I felt a strong connection to the girl for some reason. Then I realized that I had forgotten my bag, and I went to get it. And again, I had that ominous feeling that I've been watched. Suddenly, something hit me on the head. When I woke up, I found myself sitting in a car, surrounded by people wearing sunglasses, and I was really frightened. Who are you people? I demanded to know. And what do you want from me? One man told me that my dad was the reason they kidnapped me. When I told him that my dad had died a long time ago, he just laughed. Then he sprayed something on my face and I lost consciousness. When I woke up later, the other Charlotte was tied up beside me. One of the men seemed confused, seeing two of me, and he asked his boss which of us was the girl they were looking for. Suddenly, I heard someone shout, Freeze! Don't move! The police had come. They came out from the tree line. Surrounding the car, they arrested the men. Then they untied us both. Someone appeared looking very worried. The other Charlotte started coming too and asked where she was and what was going on. Then she saw her dad and she ran to him. Her dad then looked at me and asked for my name and my mother's name. When I told him, he said he knew who I was and said to send his regards to my mom and to tell her that he was still keeping her secret. Then he gave me a medal and hugged me, saying that he wasn't sure if we would ever meet again. I was still staring at him, looking confused, so he smiled and he asked me where my father was, and I told him that my father was dead. And then he said that that was their agreement, he and my mom, that he was only trying to protect me and the other Charlotte, who happened to be my twin sister. He said he got into some trouble in his line of work. Some people threatened to kill us, so he and my mom decided to split us up. She took you, and I took your twin sister he said. We did this to keep you safe. I named your twin Charlotte, just the same as you. I was still feeling a bit overwhelmed at this point. This was preposterous. I couldn't believe it. Suddenly, I heard someone calling me. Charlotte, wake up. It's time for a trip. You must have been having a nightmare because you were screaming. I woke up to find myself in the tent with my friend. When I went outside the tent, I stopped. Right in front of me, staring me in the eyes, was a girl who was my mirror image. Hi, my name is Sandra, and I'm 17 years old. 
People used to call me evil eyes. Not because I had a strange face, but because of my eyes. I had a genetic mutation, so my eyes were different colors. One was light gray and the other was dark brown. This effect made me look like an evil witch, a point of morbid curiosity. Whenever I would enter a public area, people would follow me with their eyes. Whenever children would see me, they would begin crying in fear. I had very few friends because people mocked whoever hung around with a freak like me. Society's negative reaction to my condition forced me to wear a light gray colored contact lens over my dark brown eyes so that both eyes appeared light gray in color. One day, a poetry reading contest was held in my area. I should have considered this to be an excellent opportunity for me because I used to be a very good poetry reader, but I stopped due to the people making fun of my eyes. So when I learned about the contest, I wasn't as excited as I normally would have been. Nevertheless, my mom encouraged me to take part in the contest. As I considered my mom to be my best friend, I took her advice. The day of the contest arrived. It was being held in the National City Theater with a panel of judges. There were some of the highly regarded poets in the country. A huge audience had bought tickets to attend the event. The competition was fierce because there were many skilled poets in there and they were very confident. As for myself, I was worried and nervous. I wore sunglasses to hide my mismatched eyes. This was part of my presentation, but no one knew that. I could hear some people whispering behind my back, wondering why the stupid girl was wearing sunglasses inside a building. I heard a good number of silly, stupid, hurtful, whispered comments. In due course, my turn came, and I went up on stage and began my reading. The audience mumbled to each other as I read. The judges seemed to be pleased. The poem I was reading was about my genetic peculiarity. At a suitable point, I removed my sunglasses to reveal what my poem was about. My mismatched eye colors. I expected gasps of shock or laughter from the audience, but nothing happened. The audience continued listening quietly and respectfully. After I finished my reading, the audience applauded warmly. Mom was crying tears of joy and pride. I was pleasantly surprised by the audience response. I honestly had expected much worse. Well, I didn't win the contest. I wasn't the best poet by a long shot. But what I gained was much more. Pride and confidence in knowing that I had faced my fear and gained acceptance from everyone there. Now I have a new nickname. Wonder Eyes.